Aged just 24, Maxim Vengerov is one of the most sought-after violinists in the world. He was born in Novosibirsk, Siberia, and started playing the violin aged four and a half. Without any gimmicks, he has an ability to communicate directly and emotionally through his music. In this masterclass, he reveals his approach to visualizing music and performing. We see him coaching four exceptional students in four very different pieces of violin music by Mozart, Isai, Tchaikovsky, and Sarasate. It's so easy for you. It's easy. No problem. No big deal. The idea of a masterclass is to, to give a violinist how to think about music. Gossips, yeah. First of all, to have little scenario. You know, it always helps. How mysterious, no, no, that, that's the, you, you, if, if she hears you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I use these images to, to explain to students uh, what to do with music. Expressive, expressive, no. because you have to tell the latest news, and it's so exciting. But I'm trying just to, uh, to give them uh, a chance to think about this music themselves, to, to create something that music will be so alive and so much vivid, because the imagination is part of our, uh, part of our uh, human existing. is yours. Don't rush. Take... Like a tenore singer. like in a boxing match, you know? Taram. I also try to, to help them to make a new interpretation that they created. This scene you know, must be like, Taram, Taram. No, 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 it's, it's very weak. Taram. We imagine something, then we try to perform it. We, it's nice to live with the fantasy. And uh, with the music, it's so fascinating because music is, music is fantasy. I am 15 years old and I've been playing the violin since I was six. I studied at the Yehudi Menuhin School of Music, which is just outside of London in Cobham. I've been studying there for seven years, and um, I've been studying with Natasha Boyarskaya. I lived in Moscow until I was seven. Then I moved around the place, just trying to find something, a new place to stay at. And Yehudi came to our house and he invited Natasha Boyaskaya over to the school and my mother to work there as well. And we thought it would be the best thing for me to go out there and study with, keep studying with my teacher.
this movement, like most of Mozart's third movements, is very light and very elegant. And there's big contrast between the theme and its developed sections. For instance, the, all themes are light, but some can be in major, some can be in minor, some can be a little more serious, some can be a little more funny. The character is the most important because Mozart was a genius and he was also a young genius and it's very, very difficult to reproduce the kind of character that he had at that time. You know, Mozart was always, uh, for me, he wrote this movement sort of in the opera style. Mm -hmm. And I have had the imagination when you start this movement, it's sort of like a like a ball, ballroom. Mm -hmm. Imagine everybody <coughs> with the dresses and you know, that wonderful time. And uh, everybody is dancing. So. Mm -hmm. The orchestra. Then suddenly, suddenly, attention. Queen is coming. Queen is coming. Queen. She said, continue. Mm. <laughs> Everybody is bowing. Suddenly the queen sits down, yeah. And everybody's starting gossiping about latest news in the royal house. Yeah, continue. You can create from this third movement, the, uh, the rondo, you can create sort of even write a libretto because there are so many characters. Oh, what happened? What happened? Oh, oh not possible. Really? And uh, whatever you do, you can't actually go wrong. If you take the music first, and according to that, you create an atmosphere, even a dialogues, even question and answer. This is so interesting to explore. So please. <laughs> Attention! Queen is coming. No, 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 no. Queen is. Mm. Continue. Yeah? <laughs> Please. Life. <sighs> like this, like this. Yeah. Gossips. Yeah. No, oh, mysterious. No, no. Let, let's do. You, you, if, if she hears you, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, but very expressive. Expressive. No. Because you have to tell the latest news, and it's so exciting. Oh, can you imagine what happened? Exactly. Continue dancing. Here, yeah, invitation to dance. No, you have to, you know, you have to be so invited and completely indifferent. Mm. What to do? Yeah, yeah, please. Mozart was always fascinating for me because he's so expressive with the voice. The choir. 
No, no, indifferent again. Sometimes practicing Mozart, I find very interesting just singing firstly, even the higher passages, because what you can do with the voice, all this coloratura, this is incredible. And then to go and can I do this on the violin? Everywhere. Mm. Suddenly, you see all the musicians around that are playing for the Queen. The organ uh, grind, mm -hmm. grangle, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yum, bum, mm. I think Mozart is one of the hardest composers to really capture the style exactly. The choir singing. It's not only very technically demanding, but also phrasing and movement and style is very difficult. A little bit dreamy. It's complicated in terms of what he writes, and yet it sounds on the surface is very, very simple to play. So I think the hardest thing about playing it is to make it sound simple by completely taking control over everything that you do in it. Grande finale. The choir and everybody is together. <laughs> Conclusion. The end of the story. Very virtuoso. Now must be something virtuoso. Bravo, 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 bravo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Capriccio de Basque, uh, Pablo Sarasate, is very uh, an extraordinary piece in terms of violinistic abilities. Also, you can uh, sort of show off with the instrument and with the music, and you can make a, an incredible impact and impression on an audience. But on the inside, you must feel very cool and like you don't care <laughs> what's happening. I 
I'm 11 years old and I started to play the violin when I was two because my sister, who was then 19 when I was born, is a pianist. When I was a toddler I used to go up to the piano and sort of like pick out her sonatas with one finger, but they were the basic tune of it. And my mother didn't really want to have another pianist in the house as my sister was practicing six to seven hours a day on the Steinway Grand Piano. So she started me on the violin with Suzuki method. My teacher is Professor Zach Braun and he teaches in Cologne, Lübeck, Madrid and lots of other places. And he used to teach Maxim van Graaff. Maybe you would like to take this chair. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, it's so, so good. You practiced very hard. How much you practice today? Five or six hours a day. Five or six hours. <laughs> That's the same, the, the same torture I was giving at home in Siberia. So much, much practicing. <laughs> this is your mom. <laughs> Tells you to practice. Yes. No, no, start at the beginning. Practice! <laughs> yeah, yeah, go. <laughs> Practice. You are talented. It's never enough. And this is you. It's a dance, and all around, uh, you know, playful with uh, many variation and many virtuoso things that you can uh, do with the violin. You are suddenly in the circus because your mom gave you as a present after a wonderful concert, you go to the circus. And here you see the round and many things, many clowns and you know, many, you know, uh, uh, very, very physical, everything so wonderful. This is the ballet. This is ballet dancer. Goes on one rope. And this is going in Basque, in the area where the Basque uh, is a nation north of Spain. They're very temperamental, very beautiful, and very rhythmical. So they dance, and it's very difficult because you're very easy, and you can fall down. So. You make rounds. You make, you, you jump, you jump, and then you, you come back. There you are. Have you seen once on the photo, the Sarasate, how he looked? He has here the very moustache, very proud with dignity. He goes like this. Sometimes he makes the like 
She's preparing for a concert. La. I love this piece because it's got a lot of character in it. There's one passage where you um, do legato in the bow, bow hand with the melody and you pits at the same time. And here he comes and already performs Sarasate, the greatest violinist in the world. That's you. <laughs> Continue with the chords. <laughs> play three notes at the same time and he can play also four. And he can also play pizzicata. it's a difficult piece but if you practice it a lot then it's not it, it becomes less difficult and you can also whistle mm. and then there's harmonics which is basically playing two putting two fingers on the string but letting one sound pressing one hard on the string and letting one just lightly on the string Ghostly, but some like ghosts, but not really, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Incredible virtuoso, incredible. Nobody plays better than me. Yes, start for you. You have to smile, like in the circus. <laughs> yeah? From here. <laughs> yes, that's exactly, yes. Even more. Yes, yes, go, go carry on. Bravo! Bravo! Three years old. I started playing the violin when I was six and um, I went to school in Timisoara in Romania where I was born. I studied there until the age of 16 uh, when I came to the management school after which I moved on to the Royal College of Music. I came to England to the Manium competition in 1991 and Lord Yehudi was on the panel and he heard me and he asked me if I wanted to come to his school. 
I had a um, full scholarship from um, Manimin School, which enabled me to have all my tuition fees paid for, and I just had to provide the money for traveling. And since it's a boarding school, everything was included in that. After I finished college, which was in July this year, um, I've been mainly focusing on chamber music. I have a quartet um, and we are doing quite a lot of concerts and this is basically the path that I'm taking at the moment and I'm very happy about it. So hopefully we'll um, establish ourselves um, as a British quartet. I think anything I would work with uh, with Maxim would be wonderful, but especially the Tchaikovsky, it's, it's a wonderful mixture of sweeping melodies um, combined with very difficult um, technical passages. And close your eyes and just dream. Listen to the piano, listen to the... I felt, I felt a little bit early development. I want you to sustain in this lane, in this light, as, as long as possible, you know? Really, the world is not moving here. That was, and therefore, listen to the harmonies of the piano, and it'll be clear for you. So, da -dum -da, please, the D major, you know? D major is magic. <laughs> all the violin concertos are written in D major. Da -da, almost all. <laughs> <laughs> Try even to meditate, you know. We don't chase him. Speak to the piano. No, and this is this is something you know. This is a connection again. The last time I saw Maxim perform was on television, his concert from the Royal Albert Hall, George Salty's memorial concert. You don't know where to go. Suddenly you find a way out of this labyrinth. I was really blown over by his performance of the Tchaikovsky concerto. Second level, you sort of you climb, you climb your energy and your emotions climb, but slowly, slowly. Take your time. Yeah. It just always amazes me how wonderfully mature he is for such a tender age. Really, 24 is. Um, he's just a year older than than myself. <laughs> I want you to try yourself to start building now. You have two pages of building, so this you must you know, must be incredible architect to know where to put the stone and you know you make yourself everything. The strategy is important. Same place. Tchaikovsky concerto is probably the most important concerto in the violinistic repertoire because Tchaikovsky never cared 
how difficult it should be. No, you go, go on. Yeah, yeah. The music was just pouring out of him and he just wrote it down. He was the instrument of uh, higher powers, of God-given talent. And that is a danger to, to become really uh, sort of small in just enjoying yourself playing on the violin. You must be here like a train, you know, you can't stop us. <laughs> Suddenly, you arrive to one place. Tchaikovsky wrote a violin concerto at a very difficult time when he had problems in, in his personal life. He suffered so much and when I play his music, I suffer like I would be suffering in his place. He cries in his music. The music was a, an escape for him. The music was expression of his heart. Suddenly, where am I? In the paradise. Mm. Again, you know, climbing, climbing, you, know, you, you don't know where, and it, you know, there is no limit of climbing, you know. So please try from the la 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 la. Like a tenor singer. Difficult phrases of Tchaikovsky. When he starts repeating everything, it's never enough for him to say, you know. It's a very virtuoso piece, a very lyrical piece, but in the same time, the danger of playing this concerto is becoming very sort of uh, limited in just playing the violin. That's what I find the most uh, dangerous in this wonderful piece. The most important thing to get out of the piece is to get the, the most, the, the, the greatest spirituality in this, simpl in this simplicity. 
And then the virtuoso passages become vivid music with a vivid imagination. Why did you stop here? Because I think, you know, it, it still continues. It's like, you know, it's like a train. And you continue. Because everything is that you have, you have to look forward to the next scene. Yam pa la 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 la. So this connection and this strategy, in, you know, in music, it, especially like this, this concert, I would like you to watch. Thank you. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Ejan Isai, he was a violinist, he was a celebrity, and he could do impossible things on the violin. You can see, once you start learning the piece, it is so difficult, that sometimes even impossible to play. But, assuming he was a violinist, he knew so much the instrument. He wrote for himself, and it's so, when you get, when you get into the material, when you really start breathing and uh, start feeling the music, it is so violinistically written, it's so comfortable, and then you're starting to enjoy it. One time in Berlin, I, I, Maxim was playing the Tchaikovsky violin concert, and after the concert, he played as an encore. He played the Isaiah sonata, and it was a big experience for me.
Then when I heard that I have the chance now to, to, to get in a master class here, then I was thinking, what piece can I play? And then I, I thought, ah, okay, there was the Isahi sonata. He was playing it so good. And if I have the chance now, I want to, to, to practice with him on this sonata. And then I was starting to, to practice on this sonata just for three weeks. And I hope everything will be all right. I live in Heidelberg in Germany. I'm 20 years old and I'm playing for now 14 years with a small break of two years. Everybody was talking about violin and music and everything and I don't like it anymore. And I go to play with friends and go to the street and hang around something. And then one day I miss my violin. I love the violin very much, like a girl. Fantastic. So technically, so wonderful equipped and so many wonderful colors that you draw. This is very impressive. I, I would like to tell you just a few remarks on that. You know, this is a very interesting piece uh, that was written uh, in the beginning of, of this century. So this is sort of an impressionistic time, you know, of the impressionist. It's like a painting that you, that you see with many different colors. You know, sometimes the colors are so vivid that are telling you how to play and uh, the energy, the energies are so different. There's so many wonderful moods. It's like uh, accumulating this, this incredible energy all this time and then suddenly it explodes, yeah? Like in a boxing match, you know? Taram. This you know must be like Taram. Taram. No, no, no. It's, it's very weak. Taram. You know? <laughs> It's very hard to play, but you don't lose. You don't have to lose the right hand on, on the way. You have to think about chords, but you have to put the line on. You, you know the musical line, and without a break. James.
and real storm. Real storm. Go, go, go. It's a weather changing, you know? You are out of control here. No, you're in control, no. <laughs> it's a, ch a lot of change of feelings in this piece. Either he was living in Belgium, yes, and there was a, maybe like here a lot of rain, and uh, he was sitting a lot of, of time, he was sitting at home, I think, and you can feel that he has a, a little bit depressive on it, yes? And on one moment in the piece there, like this, and there come a small depression, you can, you can feel his depression. And after this, he forget everything and go again in very technical phrases. Yeah, back to the boxing match. And in fact, that's true, because we're tired now. It's the last yard. <laughs> and now, there's a rock concert. Not classical concert anymore. They... Thank you so much.